now we're cooking. Thank you, Erin. That's awesome. All right, now we're going to go over here for Virginia Jones. She's going to do some stand-up. Virginia Jones. Uh, I'm actually very lucky. Virginia, I don't know how my mom knew it, but it's an amazing coincidence because it's also my favorite slave state. So that's really... I, uh, a little bit about me, I'm a, I'm a biomass, mostly carbon. Uh, happy holidays. Happy Christmas. Happy Jew Christmas, whatever it is you do, you know. <laughs> I do want to tell you, I don't know if you, do you guys know what a turducken is? A turkey stuck with a duck, stuck with a chicken? Did you know that if you take a, a turducken and a tofurkey, put them in a room, you can make them fight? They're natural enemies. I, uh, I was at Macy's last weekend. At Macy's, if your name was Virginia, they gave you $10 because of the awful, yes, Virginia, there's a Santa Claus show coming on the television. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is, is restitution. Uh, there was one other Virginia in there. She was this 80-year-old lady in a little red coat, so her name is age appropriate. And uh, we both got our $10, and then we went and we, went, we bought saucy underpants together. It was really good. Um, I, uh, I'm in a weird time in my life, ladies and gentlemen. I know you can't tell, but I'm in my 30s. But uh, and all of my friends, all my girlfriends, are having kids, and I'm not sure if I want to have kids. And they say ridiculous stuff to me. And my friend Jody, she's so I'm so bad at this. Ten months, is that a thing? I don't know. She's really, and she told me, uh, you know, we had a, a sonogram for the baby so we can see exactly what he looks like. And I told her, you know what? You could have done a pencil rubbing. Uh, he's packed in there so tight. I can see exactly what he looks like. And he looks like this. And it's not great. But I... I don't know if I want to have kids because natural childbirth is so popular, you know? Every, every person comes up to me on the street, so Portland, and like, you don't want to get full of drugs to have your baby because that baby comes out full of drugs. I was born in the 70s, ladies and gentlemen. It was good enough for me. I came into this world naked and full of drugs, and I've tried to get back to that the whole rest of my life. When I do meet a baby, I try to tell them, you know, this is the last time people are really going to like you for being fat and uh, bald and illiterate. Uh, essentially unemployable. Treasure it. Treasure this time. But babies never listen. Because babies are stupid. It's like they were born yesterday. I don't, I don't, no, I don't hate everything about babies. I don't want that to be a thing. Uh, you know the soft spot on their head before their skull grows together? Like, I like that. <sighs> Moms don't want you to rub it because they don't like fun. Um, but I always wonder, like, what, what, what does happen when you rub a baby's soft spot? Like, could I give it ideas, like really good ideas? Like, is it, is it like making it see like bright lights, like it's at a rave, at a baby rave? Sometimes I want to shake it and see if a magic fortune comes up, you know? Good things are happening soon. Ask again later. You bet I will, baby. Don't. It's hard. One of my friends asked me a moral conundrum. She was like, Virginia, would you, for $6,000, hit a baby in the face if there was no one to see it and uh, if the baby wasn't seriously hurt? And I told her I was so disappointed in her. I'm like, you don't know me at all, Amelia. Uh, I would pay $6,000 to hit a baby in the face uh, if it wasn't hurt and, you know, everything would be fine. This is, a, this is a magic holiday season for me. This is the year I finally decided I'm a fancy lady. I'm going to have a mink coat. Uh, but I only had one mink. So I cloned him 50 times. And then when people ask me <laughs> how many beautiful little animals had to die for you to have that coat, I tell them just one. But you know, he died a lot over and over and over again. And he died all kinds of different ways because I guess you're supposed to electrocute him, but that gets boring. So some of them died from head trauma. And uh, the last mink died from alcoholism, people. And, uh, and that mink was my best friend. I have dogs. Uh, when you don't have 
children, you know, sometimes your pets are your family, like my pets are my family. Um, except for then when they get old and, and sick, uh, you don't pay a stranger to murder your family. Uh, I don't think. Kittens are like tie hookers anyway, aren't they, ladies and gentlemen? Because um, when you meet them, they're all cute and interested in you. But if you take them home and try to make them part of your life, they just get fat and hateful. Don't ask me how I know that, but I do. You know, I tried my best. I wanted to do a good job for 30 hour day. I got a haircut for you people. Thank you. I told my gal, leave the bangs. I like to cut them later when I'm drunk. Uh, you know, drunk or premenstrual. Uh, this time both. I'll show you who's pretty. I'm <laughs> um, but I'm a Portlander, so I got my hair cut, and then I had to go to uh, the bike shop. And, you know, I was feeling pretty good because me and my hair cut, um, bike mechanic asked us out, which is super cool. Super cool. She's a, uh, <clears throat> she's a lady, and, um, and that's okay with me, you know. I mean, it's not, I mean, liberal, I'm not that liberal, but it doesn't bother me. But lesbian, and I did have to call my hairdresser, and I said, thanks a lot. <laughs> really. Uh, lesbians frequently like me, and it doesn't bother me, but on some level I, I feel bad that I'm leading them on. So any lesbians out there, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but also, it's just like, it doesn't do anything for me for lesbians to like me. Like, there's, it's not like I have a ton of woodworking that I need done. You know, it's just, uh, it's not useful. I, mean, I know there's a lot of single guys on the internet who would love to have dominion over lesbians, but it's my cross to bear, you know? <laughs> It's just like, what if you woke up tomorrow and your superpower was you could smell milk going bad from a long ways away? Speaking of bikes, you know, um, I ride a bike. I'm that kind of Portlander. Uh, I do lights, bike lane, very important. But um, I was reading an article about how bike commuters, because they live longer than regular people, are actually bad for the planet because we continue to use resources. And if we really loved Mother Earth, we would all ride scooters and smoke like the French. The French actually stopped bathing to save waters, I understand it, and nobody asked them to. Um, I do like those little nylon tents that people put on the back of their bikes to put their kids in. I don't know if you've seen those burly things. Uh, to me it says, I don't know if I did want to have a kid. I'll put Jasper in this nylon tote and let God decide. Uh, it's hard. Um, being as I am, an aging goth, uh, I get so mad in the Hot Topic uh, because when I was growing up, like, we didn't have all your awesome stuff in a one-stop shop. Like, you know, if I wanted to pierce my nose, I didn't have a fancy piercing salon. I had to put a carrot up there so the safety pin did not go through to the other side. You know, uh, when I wanted clown-colored hair, I had to put Kool-Aid on it in the backyard and so I could be cherry or grape or fruit punch. When I wanted to find cool new music, you didn't have your iTunes, your Pandora. When I wanted to find out what music was cool, I had to go home with an older guy and the next morning go through his record collection while he was asleep. Many times I woke up flipping through records and going, sticks? Oh, I've wasted my youth. Uh, I have a friend who likes to wear ski masks out on dates and um, she's not ugly. She just likes to make out like a bandit, ladies and gentlemen. I'll take it. Take it. You know what really gets my goat? Wolves. Uh, you know, at Christmas time, sometimes you think about the Pope, you know, Pope Benedict has been in the news. And he is not as popular as his predecessor, Pope John Paul, and his people are concerned about it. Partially it's because Pope John Paul, I was I had like a friendly, grandfatherly, almost Santa-like appearance and rosy cheek. And Pope Benedict always looks like he's starving for brains. And, uh, it's also weird because when you're Pope, you, uh, you get to choose your own name. It's one of the few jobs you get where you get to pick your own name. Stripper, Pope. And it disappointed me that he went with Benedict because he could have been anything. He totally ignored my suggestion, which was Pope Awesome Robot the First. <laughs> I love Portland. I'm from a red state. I don't know if anybody has ever been to a red state, but I'm from Texas, where this package did not go over particularly well. Um, 
But it's like, it's weird living in a red state. It's just like people hear slightly differently. You know, you say something like atheist and they hear Satanist. Or, you know, you say feminist and they hear lesbian serial killer. It's, uh, I couldn't wait to get here. Uh, when I first moved here, a good friend of mine took me around to all the sites and he took me to the Saturday market and he was so proud and he was like, this is totally unique to Portland. Uh, nobody has anything like this. And I had to tell him, I'm sorry. Drug addicts will sell you crap under bridges wherever you go. Uh, <laughs> it's not special. It's, uh, it's where I got my laptop. I, uh, I'm actually, I'm a vegetarian, and, uh, which is great around the holidays. Thanks, stuffing. Uh, I'm vegan. And people think that vegetarians and vegans are really hard to feed and like picky, like we have all these rules, but I don't have a lot of rules. Like if it has like, you know, children, loves them, gives birth, has eyes, I don't eat it. It's the rest of everybody who has crazy insane rules. Like over here, uh, we have ducks and chickens and pigs, and these are the animals we eat. And over here, we have cats and dogs and small pigs, and these are the animals we love. You could be going along really well for several years, but if you screw up and eat one cat, they never let you forget it. <laughs> I, uh, I was reading about Botox, and there's dangers associated with it. Apparently, it can get into your brain, <laughs> uh, which is amazing, because you're like, no, I want it shot into my face, not my brain. <laughs> But I think in most people, it might not make that much of a difference until they find themselves like uh, uh, at a Macy's, you know, stock still while the child asks his parent, Mommy, why did this mannequin pee herself? Uh, I, haven't, uh, I haven't been having a great week, actually. I had an MRI this week, and um, they found out that uh, I'm, a, I'm claustrophobic. I... Uh, I don't like that little tube, you guys. <laughs> I like the light, because every time I spit, I can, it's like a beautiful fountain. It's, and that's just for me, not for the viewer at home. Hey, <laughs> give money. Um, how do you know you're dating a nihilist when you sneeze, and instead of Gesundheit, she says Schadenfreude? Uh, that's just for the smarty pies. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, no one uses the word dreamboat correctly anymore. It's, it's never anyone talking about the boat of their dreams, right? I'm married, which uh, has cut into my dating a lot, like a lot, a lot. Um, but when I met my husband, I knew, I, like I just knew that he was the one for me. And I hope that happens for you people at home because when I met my husband, I knew that we were the last two single people in Portland who did not have herpes. Uh, <laughs> And marriage is very beautiful to me, because marriage is saying, you're the one. You're the one that I want to watch grow older and die. Uh, <laughs> ladies, dark? Me? Come on. This is very peachy. Um, I do want to talk to the ladies. You've heard the expression, beauty's only skin deep, and it's absolutely true. Everyone is pretty unattractive once their skin's off. Um, I don't know if you guys saw the bodies exhibit at OMSI last year, but it's not like you were walking around going, that Chinese jerky person's hotter than that Chinese jerky person. <laughs> Just doesn't happen. And I know sometimes the ladies are worried about their chest. You know, they're like, oh, am I attractive? Do I have what it takes to like, keep a guy? Like, I'm flat chested. I have a simple non surgical solution. Just get fat. Uh, I wasn't always like this. My chest is made of sandwiches. And um, guys don't complain. Uh, I do want to talk a little bit about my hero, Paris Hilton. She's an inspiration to me because she took what the world gave her, giant multi-generational trust fund, and the ability to maintain her own birth weight. And she's created a real career out of it, you know? She's, had, she's got a perfume, and she was on a show, and she was in a movie, and she invented the phrase, that's hot, which that saves firefighters' lives, because before Paris Hilton, they would come up to the door and go, oh, it's kumquat, it's koala, I don't know. Maybe we should open it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, she's done all these things, and she's tricked us into forgetting that she's 
an illiterate hooker with a giant nose and a lazy eye. And that's, <laughs> that's magic to me. But in closing, I do want to talk about attraction, about what attracts us to each other. Now, men are attracted to blonde ladies with large chests, and they can't help it. They don't even know why they like these things. It's way back in their lizard brain. And the lizard brain is in a different per place for every person. Like, you get, you know, college professor, NASCAR fan, Tiger Woods, like different areas tell you what to do. But they're attracted to this because of biology. Because a blonde woman is a young woman, a woman who can still have your babies, right? And women are sometimes attracted to an older gentleman, someone distinguished, a silver fox. Because deep down in a woman's lizard brain, she knows he's going to die soon. And I can get his stuff. I can watch the shows I want to watch. Ladies and gentlemen, in 30 Hour Day, that's been my time. I'm Virginia Jones. Thanks so much. Yeah, I like the variety show part. I do too. We just kind of get to sit here and listen to cool stuff. Yeah. Which is awesome. I like the sitting. Yeah, the sitting is good. The I listening like the listening is, good. is I'm good really listening. good. I like the watching too. We've got the big monitor. Mm -hmm. It's like sitting home watching TV. This is easy. Last 10 hours are going to be cake. You know what? 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 We've got something else to watch though. What? Remember we alluded to the fact that maybe the part of the mayoral interview we played wasn't the best part of the mayoral interview? Right. There's a second part of our interview with the mayor. What? Which wasn't so much us interviewing the mayor as it was maybe the mayor interviewing us. Yeah, he's a pretty good interviewer, that he's, one. He's good at the talking. Mm -hmm. uh, talking. Strong suit. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he should be a for politician. Politi or something. He should go into that politics <laughs> stuff. Um, Might so be a future for If him. I'm not mistaken, I think that we're ready to go ahead and roll that. You better edit this. <laughs> Bam! Pow! Ooh. Get, we could do a total Colbert thing like, oh, I, I didn't understand the things you said. <laughs> do I have to edit that part? Of that? <laughs> <laughs> we, we always like to mix we like know, a little the things with shtick. We like move my I'm, uh, I'm pleased to announce the winners of the 2009 This Pumpkin Hasn't Rotted Yet award uh, to each of you for your fantastic work in putting this all together. This is actually a pumpkin organic from my garden that has been here in the office. And <laughs> and there you go. Thank Thanks. you very much. Thank you yes. so very much. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you. I didn't, I didn't never know this day would come. It's going on this day. I'm really proud yeah. of this. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know. It says pumpkin. We don't want to take it. It's beautiful, though. Very nice. Do you feel like you've accomplished something in your life? I now? do. Yes, okay. I've now met all my goals I could imagine. So that was. I think this. This has been about four minutes and twenty six <laughs> seconds. <laughs> no, I know. And uh, what that means, we have twenty nine hours. Yeah. Uh -huh. Roughly. Fifty one well, minutes and thirty three. We're gonna 33. have a pajama party and you know. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, do hair and makeup. It'll be fantastic yeah. and. That'll kill another 
15 minutes? Sure. Yeah. And then it's only 29 hours and a half. It's, well, it's I, I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait to watch them nod off. Are you going to take any sleep breaks at all? Let's give it this. You're not worthy of this. <laughs> can I take it back? Oh, <laughs> we've had our pumpkin revoked. I'm going to interview them. Oh. Now. Are you going to? So, are you going right. to take any sleep breaks at all? I'm going to try not to. I'm going to. Ha I'm going to have to have a nap. I get mean. Really? I get mean. Yeah. But no more than 20 minutes at no a time. No more than 20 minutes at a time. Yes. Right. I'm okay. just going to close my eyes and put my head on my pillow, and then our personal assistant will come in and go, Cammy, wake I, up. Now, in terms of your inspiration. Of this is, is it really, are you down more the Jerry Lewis path or the um, yeah more the okay. we're going more probably, more the Jerry, Jerry Lewis. Lewis yeah yeah there'll probably be a lot of crying at the end and him all that kind of thing. he's the crying yeah weeping yeah. Kleenex all over the place I I packed a special box of Thank Kleenex you. just for you for really sure. super a soft box. a whole box okay, good. and and what kind of is there an uh, audience a live audience in studio is it all no we kicked them all out yeah. really yeah we they, thought just, about doing that it got at first, the logistics but... were crazy yeah. Yeah. fire marshal and all that. yeah yeah just with crazy. the acts for the variety show alone we're gonna have like a hundred people so oh so you're you're gonna have the performers as yes. your audience just yeah. yes yeah and the uh, performers you lined up I mean are amazing yeah we've been like it's been crazy yeah. how many people have been like I want to help we mm -hmm. want to we want to be part of this in some way, and so all pretty much all day Saturday is going to be music, stand up, skit, all kinds of like variety show and stuff. What, what sort of gave you the idea exactly for doing this? We do a tech show together, mm -hmm. and it's a twenty-minute tech show, but it usually takes us four hours to record it. <laughs> um, and we decided Does that, that mean this is going to be ninety <laughs> hours. <laughs> yeah. So we decided we could definitely stay up for thirty hours, and we just wanted to do more to give back. We right. wanted a better way to volunteer. So. Yeah. And you really tapped uh, a whole segment of the population that was just wanted to be out, mm -hmm. both in terms of their contributions of performance and and in terms of, I mean, the buzz on this is great. You're going to have a lot of eyeballs and a lot of people logging in. Yeah. Now, uh, there's obviously great chemistry between you, and I'm, you get along really well, but what irritates uh, you about her? Mm -hmm. Well. Mm -hmm. What irritates me about her is that she actually does really well at pretending like she's not irritated <laughs> with me or things like oh, that. Really? So we had to set up a secret signal so that I know for sure yeah. if like we're just doing pretending. Witty, witty banter or yeah. if, if she's actually mad. And then what, what irritates you most about him? I'm asking these questions because <laughs> over the course of 30, You're gonna 30 get to hours, I think we should look for the signs, you know, because there's always... <laughs> that might be important. So what irritates you most about it? It's just that, okay, we'll go with the standard. His hair is usually too tidy, oh, and I, I have to mess it up. And also, it bothers him when I pick lint off of him, yeah. and that, that bothers me. I like being linty. I know. Really? That's just, that's your trademark. That's it's how the you lint. roll. The yeah. lint is my trademark. So every time yes. I go at him with a lint roller, he flinches, and yeah. oh, like I'm going to hurt I, him. I didn't know that was your real hair. Yeah, isn't it great? The plugs are turned up. Uh, yeah, see now. Well, at least all of us on the couch have our natural hair color. <laughs> no. So look for the warning signs. Uh, yes. The more you give, the less irritable they That's will true. be That's with each true. other. That's true. We'll be yeah. nicer to each other. The lower the sure. chance that we'll have to call the police cert team out. And uh, we'll yeah. do that at, you know, hour number 29. That's probably a good idea. You know what? Yeah. We, we are very lucky, though, that Steph Strickland, who's a friend of both of ours, is going to come down and, and manage us for the last two yeah. hours. Just she's going to come on down and she's going to keep me from hitting him and he's, she's going to keep him from crying. Right. It's all about protecting him, actually. I'll be okay. <laughs> Stand in front of me he's when I start bowling. Kind of the I'm the weak link. We figured that, you know, she can do the whole news board. thing, she can handle the Olympics, and she can manage oh, us okay. for two hours. <laughs> so the last two hours, we'll probably see one of those circus stools and a whip from <laughs> yeah. off the camera yeah. as this individual keeps them both in line. Yes. Yes. Well, Good luck. Thank you. And Thank you. Uh, thanks again for doing this. Absolutely. This is uh, Sam Adams reporting live from <laughs> City Hall. Uh, this is the before picture. Yes. We're um, perky. We'll see what they look like after 30 hours. In the meantime, give lots of money. These, uh, these times are really tough for a lot of people, and they need your help.
And it's not do a little perky. thingy. Can we do that, yeah, Joe? Can we, can we throw it over to, to Aaron? Is that okay? All okay. right. Cool. That's much more fun than us. We're going to go over to Sound Semantics. It's going to be our first band of the variety show. Very exciting. That's fine.
morning sunlight Now I prefer the dreary night Thank you very much. Hey everybody, we're Sound Semantics. My name is Aran. My name's Ali. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in today. That song was called I Used To, and this next one's called Not Written Yet. <laughs> song has not been written yet No notes scribbled down, no lyrics to forget This song has not been written yet This melody is newly formed I doubt it stays intact for long It's not yet fixed or bound or sealed or locked and frame this song has not been written yet no black and white no key or q where we go from here is up to me and you no black and white no key or q where we go from here is up to me and you to decide no need to look back as it say regret this song has not been written yet Thoughts have not escaped my head Nothing committed by ink or lead Nothing to alter my high intent This song has not been written yet My fingers still don't know their way Around the neck where they should play no single string or single fret this song has not been written yet no black and white no key or q where we go from here is up to me and you no black and white no key or q where we go from here is up to me and you to decide no need Look back as a state regret. This song has not been written yet. I'd like to share the stage with you where things emerge out of the blue. But there's a contradiction. Can you see? This song has not been written yet by me. Yeah, the song has not been written yet by me No, the song has not been written yet by me Mindless. 
That song was called Static. This next one is called I Woke Up and it's off of our debut album, Ebb and Flow. I woke up alone today. Everything left behind. The sky had grown dark outside. Like a rising tide. today. 
side I've become a gambler man In the odds and numbers I hide In the numbers I hide In the numbers I hide The numbers I hide All right, this next song Thanks. This next song is particularly about Portland, but really it's it's universal. It's all about our love for this this really special part of our generation. <coughs> Your skin tight jeans, the way you clean yourself. Or I guess I mean the way you don't The irony In everything you say Except your views on news and art new 
tattoo your fixie bike A band you like I never knew Before you treated them tonight Cause I follow you Now I think I might like to be a hipster too song it's called where we'll be thank you so much for for tuning into 30 hour day today and thanks for having us we're sound semantics
Thank you very much for having us. We're back. Kind of light. Oh, this is us. Yeah, here we are. Hey. And look, we've got we got Brett here too. We've added one. It's a, it, the more the merrier. That's say, what I say. Hello say. to Brett. He's and got a big giant old fork. fork. Everybody. You know, we noted last night when you were uh, at Beer and Blog, you walked past. We saw you. I like the haircut. Yeah, yeah. It looks they, good. The bishops. Uh, bishops. I'm gonna give them a plug. They nice. they cut hair short. Yeah. Yeah. It's been it's been long for a while and. It, it has. Um, some people didn't like that it was so short, but uh, it's growing do I, out. Do I know some people? Is she yeah. pretty? She is. She's very pretty. She's got great hair, too. <laughs> I'm just saying. I know her. I, I'll survive. If she wants you to cut your hair, there might be a good cause to do so. <laughs> From my perspective, that's just kind of the way that works. How are you guys doing? You guys holding up? Good. Yeah. Are you hungry? We're hungry. We could we could nibble. Yeah, so what what some of you may not yeah, I think you're gonna go, go ahead. Go ahead, you do it. What it's some okay. of you may not know is that Brett is the, the magic behind uh, food carts Portland and is the guy who knows If you don't know that then you probably don't want to change the life. Yeah, though, the guy who knows cool everything stuff. there is to know about the inner workings of the You know, food not everything carts. there is to know, but everything that one man can know. Right. Yes. There are always new food carts. That's true. Yes. But he's he does his best to stay on top. I call myself the chief food cart enthusiast. Nice. Mm -hmm. I like you that. Know. Remember back in the day when you could create your own titles at your own at your yeah. company? Yes. You know? Wizard. <laughs> yeah. Things like that. So what would um, my title be? I, I don't even want to begin to think. One of my uh, friends in New York who does food carts calls us cartivores. 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 You know, like omnivores, cartivores. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. I like But I don't that. think I actually go up and eat a cart. No. That's probably not that tasty. It would, it would hurt my teeth. Yeah, it's a little tinny. Not too good. So I did go out and visit some carts for you guys okay. um, last week and shot some video. I'm not sure if we'll be able to get that video out, but okay. it's funny. We'll get uh, it. We'll get it. We'll have it eventually. played sometime we'll in the it. next. But would you like to hours. try some food or see some food? I would food? like to see and try some food that you brought for us. <laughs> I, I don't know that I'm comfortable eating with the giant fork now that it's been No, before, no, though. no. Uh, we have forks and uh, oh, napkins good. here. Oh, good. Excellent. Let me move so, my, my Ned water water. Oh, I have this great cooler that'll stay warm. Interesting. This is magic. Yeah. How does that work? It's, is there anything like Withy's? Yeah, Withy's cooler? had one of those magic safe box things when they came. I carried it. Too. It was heavy. Maybe that was the pie. So um, there are not a lot of lunch carts open early morning, Saturday morning. So uh, <laughs> they, uh, um, I went around to some carts in North Portland and uh, picked up some breakfast and some lunch items. Mm -hmm. So one of the, the first item is a sandwich. It's a breakfast sandwich, Holy a seasonal cow, special awesome. from uh, right The Big A, which uh, is considered one of the, it's one of the newest carts in the scene. And the Oregonian actually put it on their top 10. Wow. Um, it's uh, up on, up at Mississippi Marketplace and it's, uh, run by a couple of wonderful women who make great breakfasts. Huh. What and, would we do uh, without Brett to show us these things? I know. What? I said, what would we do without Brett to show us these things? And uh, this has egg and ham and gruyere and I believe oh, even there. some uh, spinach in there. Oh. Huh. So, awesome. Um, if you would like to partake or not, we may. we'll set that down <laughs> we there. Just want to see, we, we want, want to see our options. We'll see it first. We don't want to bite on the first one. Who knows what's coming out of the uh, magic I box know. next? I know. Magic so that is, <laughs> they do offer vegetarian fare, but that, that is obviously not vegetarian. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like this one. So the next one, I, I love their little packaging mm -hmm. because it, it's like a little, uh, little bowl of goodness, mm -hmm. happy. I like happy. So this is also from the new Mississippi Marketplace area. And this is called a native bowl. Oh. And native bowl does about six or eight different bowls. They're also now doing veg homemade vegetarian sausage. And um, I what, what I love is. about these is, I'm not sure if you can see the glory of that, yeah. but there's just beautiful color in there with uh, green onions, chopped green onions, uh, carrots. What it is is it's layered in here. And there's rice, there's sauce, there's soy curls, which is the latest thing in the vegan world yeah. and the whole thing is vegan and it's just it's they're they're decadent you just I sit here and I just munch away at them while having a beer uh, do you eat, at the local do you bar. Do you eat it by layer or do you mix it together? Well I prefer to mix it together but the first time I had one uh, it was so full I I would have spilled over uh -huh. so I did start at the top and work my way down 
and it was great. I was very impressed by that. It's so. like a vegan parfait, if you will. Yeah, that's a, that's a great, great you idea. You like your fancy words. I do. I threw out parfait there. That's a good. I could score pretty well on words with friends. On that. So this is called the Alberta Bowl. So Alberta Bowl. Alberta Bowl. Awesome. And then, lastly, is a. Yeah, that's a big one. It's a big one. <laughs> so there's another new cart up off North Williams called Shea Cafe. And I'm going to give them a plug. They're having a baby in January. So everybody oh, wow. uh, wish them well. Congratulations. Um, don't awesome. go like the third week of January. They might be <laughs> closed. Um, but uh, they, have, uh, they have a new, a cool thing going there. There are spots for two carts. It's on uh, the corner of North Williams and Shaver. Um, but the, the developer, I'm sorry? <laughs> I said I'm literally at the edge of my seat. <laughs> <laughs> the developer took an, an, a 19, early 1900s building and uh, redeveloped, rebuilt it, re-cleaned it up, etc., to have indoor seating for the cart. And there's a coffee shop there. There's a, a dessert place there. And they're going to have events. Um, they do burgers and sandwiches. And so I brought oh, a burger. That looks good. That, um, one of their best things that I love is a is, I'm sorry. Oh, there um, we go. That is. One of the best things they do is they do uh, crispy onions, nice. uh, like deep fried crispy onions yeah. on top of the burger. They also do really great yam fries and other types of huh. fries, and uh, they they donated this to the charity. So uh, thank you, guys. Thank you, Shea Cafe. That's awesome. Oh, wow, and, uh, Shea Cafe, thank you, and congratulations on your impending yes, joy. And great. they wanted me to tell you that, watch for it, they're going to have a, um, a, a charity event in January mm -hmm. for the Oregon Humane Society where they're going to have yeah. animals for adoption. And they're going to do soups great. for a dollar, and then all proceeds go to the Humane Society. So That's watch awesome. for that at foodcartsportland.com, and cool. uh, we'll, we'll be throwing it out there. Great. So. Awesome. Thank Fantastic. You. This is awesome. It, I'm always amazed at like the wealth of the, the, diversity. The, yeah, the quality and the diversity of food that's available at food carts, especially in Portland, and the just the environment that we've kind of developed to support those folks. Which mm -hmm. is great. Yeah, Portland has really embraced the food carts as a community, uh, a piece of community, I guess, yeah. and it's it's part of the plan. It's part of a yeah. city plan. It's it's an interpretation of the city plan, I guess yeah. you could say. <laughs> Some people may disagree with it. <laughs> I love it. But we don't have them right now. Yeah. So. No, well, only the people who agree with it. Okay. What's your guys' favorite food cart? Ooh. I think I know yours. They might have been ahead, here. Tell me. Garden State? Hell yeah. Garden? That man. Yes. Oh, what's your favorite Garden State? Dish. Well, so I've I've um, had the chickpea mm -hmm. dish. That's, that's Dr. Normal's favorite. Yeah, and I've had the meatball dish. I like them both. Mm -hmm. um, I, I prefer more the chickpea since the meatball is messy and I'm just. You know. I like he's got a Cuban vacation. No. Oh. It's pork. And he has these little like 